Girl, I'm a badger. Hey everybody, it is the Angry Honey Badger here, and it's time for another champion build video. Today we shall take a look at Sejuani in the jungle. She's very strong right now. A lot of reasons behind this. The recent changes to the tank jungle meta is one of the reasons why she's super strong. We picked up first blood there. That's not the reason why she's super strong, but that this game will accelerate our team into greatness. Um, also because as a team we just play a lot better than this other team. So, um, this game is a cluster. It's going to be fun to watch, hopefully. So, what we're going to do in the build is talk about runes and masteries. We're going to talk a little bit about pros and cons, what to max for your abilities, and then of course the items themselves, along with your abilities. Yay. So, um, after getting first blood, we went back to base, picked up some boots, a couple more pots. We can just jungle a little bit longer um, and be quicker with boots. Boots are good. Yay, boots. That should be a chant. Go team, go. Anyways, let's talk about those runes and masteries, though, and get those out of the way. So, runes. What I like to take is the attack speed marks. Helps clearing. We're going to take armor, seals, magic resist per level scaling glyphs, and then movement speed quintessences. Help us get around. Kind of standard setup, actually, for tankyish jungles. Or just jungles in general. So, um, then for the masteries... Um, we'll show you them in a second after this kill, which, of course, jumping Riven jumps right into my queue. That's an easy kill. We'll take it. Congratulations for not warding very well. Um, future items might help with that. Anyways. Anyways, where were we? It's the masteries. What we do with those is a 921. Pretty simple. Down at the bottom. You can look at them while I kill LeBlanc, because that's a terrible place to recall LeBlanc. That's another kill. Oh god, killing spree at four minutes on the Sejuani. Oh, that's just game. That's game. You cannot feed a Sejuani. We will find out why. Um, anyways, back to the build. Because, hey, I can see me buying items. We're going to pick up the Ranger's Trailblazer. And, of course, we're going to be building it. Ranger's Trailblazer, yeah. Into the um, Cinder Hulk. Kind of obvious, I would think. Uh, you probably saw that coming a mile away. That's what all the tank junglers pick up. It's a great item. And in fact, even some non-tank junglers have been getting it because it's not bad. Um, slight nerf on it coming. Or just, was it coming or recent? I don't know. I get confused with the PBE sometimes. But uh, good item. Fantastically strong. Everybody likes it. Hooray for that. So that's what we will be building. Let's, though, jump to those abilities for a second. Um, let's kick things off with your Frost Armor passive. Dealing damage to an enemy with an ability or basic attack grants Sejuani bonus armor and reduces movement speed slowing effects on Sejuani. Um, it's a little more detailed than that, but that's the gist of it. Pretty nice passive, actually, for team fighting. At level 1, we're going to put a point to our W. This is your Northern Winds. We're going to max this out first. Your basic attack deals um, percentage maximum health damage plus... Some bonus magic damage to her target and all nearby enemies. And that swirling AoE around her. Super fun. Um, if the ability is uh, reactivated, Sejuani immediately starts swinging instead of on her next attack. We went and we found uh, Fiddlesticks. Well, we knew he was going to recall somewhere in his jungle. Well, we're going to immediately recall so we don't get caught. And yeah, that's your Northern Winds. Max this out first. Just received a, small, a slight nerf, but honestly, no big deal. She did tons of damage. It was a real thing. At level 2, we're going to put a point into Permafrost. Passively, Sejuani's abilities and basic attacks apply Frost to enemies for 4 seconds. Um, when you activate this, all enemies with Frost will take damage and will be slowed by a percentage for 1.5 seconds. A lot of people like to max that out second. I do max that out last. You can call me bad for it. I do not care. I like putting a few more points into my Arctic Assault, which is the next thing we put a point into. I like maxing it out second because I like getting it on a little bit shorter cooldown. Also, its base damage is quite good, is the other reason. So, um, And it does scale from a decent amount of AP, which we will buy a tiny, 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 tiny bit. We'll get to that in a second. But Arctic Assault, like I said, is what you put a point into. At uh, level 3, charge forward, knock enemies up into the air, dealing magic damage to them. The charge stops once it hits an enemy and knocks them up, so it won't go the full duration if you do run into someone. So, prepare for that. We're going to go ahead and go for this LeBlanc. She used all of her jumps to get away. She's going to use the last one. We're just going to flash. It helps me get out of tower range and helps me get another kill. Hooray! We have all five kills. And that's a, that's a solid GG at 9 minutes. And a dragon. Anyways, back to the build. So your 
last thing is, of course, your glacial prison. So Jwani throws out that big block of ice in a line. If it hits an enemy and it is next to other enemies nearby, it's going to stun all those enemies. And if it doesn't stun them, it will shatter and slow enemies nearby by 30%. All enemies in the area will take magic damage. It's a good ultimate, and if teams stack up, it is a lot of crowd control. Um, really good, too, because you can engage using it from outside of fights, and you can, it actually covers a good amount of distance, too, so quite good. Sejuani has lots of crowd control, which is why she's a very strong tank jungler. Lots and lots of crowd control is kind of the name of the game. She can keep people who are usually pretty uh, feisty to get away, like a uh, Riven, not very quick to get away there, Riven. You're kind of slowed a lot. Also, Scion CC plus Sejuani. I mean, that's just powerhouse ridiculousness right there. Um, and that's uh, it's important to have. So, yes. We finished off our Trailblazers like we talked with its enchant. We've built the Moby boots. I like the Mobies. Helps me get around the jungle. Helps me invade, run around, do things. Helps also for hardcore initiations. Because you can come really, really fast with an ultimate or an arctic assault just to get into a fight really, really nice. I personally like it. If you want ninja tabby or merc treads, those would be your other great options for Sejuani. This is a personal opinion. Also read chat if you want to see how angry LeBlanc gets for the camp, aka I'm ganking all of the solo lanes, not just hers. Be more mad. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. Anyways. Moving on from the sad LeBlanc. We want to focus on mostly being a tank for our team. Now, there's two ways around this, and we'll talk about both of them. Um, typically, you've heard me complain about don't have a Scion in the top lane unless the rest of your team can deal legit damage. Well, luckily, Sejuani can, but um, not as much as other junglers. We're going to gank. Fiddlesticks is up in this bush, too. Fantastic. Well, now she's just time leaving time. Fiddlesticks to die. What a, what a, <laughs> wow. She just baited her jungler to death. How sad. Um, we knew he was in the area because we saw him show his face a second ago. And, um, yeah. Like I said, this game's spiraling out of control for the enemy team. But what, what were you saying? Okay, so if you have a Scion on your team, it's really helpful if you can deal a lot of damage with all of your other lane positions. Obviously, Vel'Koz can do so. And Callista can do so. Sejuani also can do so because of her kit actually has really strong base damage numbers. We have also picked up something that helps us with damage, which is the Haunting Guys. Now, the one time I would say don't buy Haunting Guys if you are Sejuani is if you are behind early game. If you're on par, you can probably pick it up. But if you fall behind due to getting invaded or just dying a lot on ganks or just something and you're really falling behind and you need the tank stats, go for the tank stats first over the haunting guys. Um, haunting guys will technically slow you down a little bit because you, in, in real, realistically, you are a front line for your team. So if you go haunting guys and you're really far behind and you're at the 30 minute mark and you finally like get your haunting, like you're just, you're just really far behind. Don't do that. It's really bad. So um, that's the time you would not want to do that. The other thing, too, to uh, take into consideration is the Haunting Guys obviously will be building into a Leandri's Torment for us later on in the game. Don't build the Leandri's Torment right after you get the guys. It's not as helpful as it will be later on, and you will need those tank stats. Um, and also, the Leandri's will just scale better once you have more later on. Just... That's straightforward. So what we've done with our last few trips back to base is oh we started God. building towards our other core items that you would have gone for first if you would have skipped the guys, but we didn't obviously because we didn't need to. We're really far ahead. Um, we are going for that Randuin's Omen next. That's going to team up really well with all of our kit. It's going to give us a lot of armor and magic, or not armor and magic resist, just armor and health, and we're going to be able to use its passive to slow people down even more. We're just a slowing... Uh, machine and that is kind of what Sejuani does she's just she's just a ball of slow that's why she does in fact have the perma slow I mean it's like they're not or permafrost they should just named it perma slow um, that's just her kit anyways so we uh, we're building towards that the next item we would be building towards or if we needed to prioritize it against a full magic damage team would in fact be two options here okay three options here the 
Banshee's Veil, the Locket of the Iron Solari, or the Spirit Visage. Honestly, it depends on what you're going for for different reasons. Locket, this is good for helping your team out. Also, it's just good in general, anyways. Um, Banshees and Spirit Visage, you know the arguments between the two of them. One blocks a spell, the other one gives you um, the cooldown reduction and the ep epic health regen. So, we will get to one of those in just a bit, but not right away. Um, the other option that we could have actually done this game, but I'm not going to really bring it up as a full-on awesome option, is the you have tons of tanks on your team, aka we have a Scion. Um, you could actually do an Abyssal Scepter. You could. It is going to give you magic resist, but if you get more health, it's still going to help you scale with damage on your northern winds. So it's a trade-off of do we want stats for all of our abilities, or do we just want more health for more tanking, and it's still going to help out our northern winds. So there's an option there too. Also, I know a lot of people back in the day wanted Rylize just to quadruple the slow amount. Honestly, think it's a bit of overkill, and we don't need that much damage, so we're not going to go for that item. If you wanted to do full AP Sejuani, you would obviously be like Leandri's... Rylize, Abyssal, you go like, you just go ham with the defensive, defensive AP items you could call them because they have either resists or health. Um, you wouldn't really go like Death Cap or Void Staff, you wouldn't pick those ones up, you pick everything else up. We're getting to a big brawl in the top lane, the enemy team finally got a couple kills. Um, you know the other problem is with the enemy team? They have a Bard. Like, we'll get to Bard in the future, he's getting buffs, but Bard is just weak right now, so uh... He's hard. We're gonna pick up the triple kill because Sejuani, legendary. Why not? Somebody has to be. It might as well be us. That's the that's the way you should address all things in league. You're like, well, if somebody's got to win, why not us? It's the perfect mentality to win all of your games. We have a lot of gold. Holy cow! This game's gonna end soon because of it. So. The bigness weaknesses to Sejuani, honestly, right now, there's not a ton. Um, this is kind of a situational weakness thing. She doesn't deal tons and tons and tons of damage, like burst burst damage. Not that it's low. She definitely does damage. Like, if you get on an ADC who's on par with where you're at on level, you probably can kill him and solo them. It's real. She does a lot of damage, but not, like, in comparison to the burst damage of, like, a full AD Zin Zhao in the jungle or Kha'Zix or something. So, although none of those champions are being played because tank meta, but uh, it's going to happen. The only other things, too, is if you do get caught out without your team, you could have a bad time. If you're not nine kills ahead of everybody you're fighting. It just looks like we're literally walking all over this enemy team. Because we are, but it's just ridiculous. Um... What else? What else? What else? What do I not like about Sejuani? A little bit of cooldown reduction goes a long way. Her cooldowns are not really long, but they're not really short. Arctic Assault, without any cooldown reduction, fully maxed out, is an 11 second cooldown. So, it's not a terrible thing to get some CDR. Which is why I believe we are building towards the Spirit Visage. CDR, right there. Boom. Nailed it. You also do get CDR from the locket of the Iron Solari. Both are good. They're gonna surrender. Everything you need to know about Sejuani, though, is in the description. Bug splat, and I'll see you all in the next build video.